Cool, what's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about two ways to create procedural rust inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we're in the shader editor. So tap on the shading up at the top and I've actually set mine up where I have a 3D view over here. Make sure by tapping the Z key that you're in material preview mode. And then on the right hand, on the right hand side of the page, you want to make sure that you have a shader editor selected. So what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to add a new material to apply to this object, right? And so when we first look at this object, the first thing I want to do is I want to make it look kind of metal. So I'm just going to jump into the principal BSDF shader. I'm going to drag my metallic to the left and I'm gonna go ahead and drag my roughness to the right a little bit so this is a little bit more reflective like this and we can kind of play around with this we're not stuck with this right now I just want this to look kind of metallic and so now what we want to do is we want to take this object and we want to make it look like it's either had damage applied to it or that it started to rust all right and so the next thing we need to do is we need to apply something to make our material bumpy and so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna do a shift A and we're gonna add a bump map right now. So we're just gonna add a bump and we're gonna drag the normal of our bump into the normal right here. Now notice how nothing really changed, right? And the reason for that is because there's no inputs going into this bump map right now. So it's not telling it to make anything bumpy. And so this is where some of the uh, material modifiers that we've been talking about come in. So the first thing we want to do is we want to do a shift A and we want to add a noise texture modifier. So we're going to select noise texture right here. And what we want to do is we want to drag the color value for the noise texture into the height right here. So we're just going to drag that into our height. Well, notice how now our material starts to get bumpy. And so you can adjust the scale of this texture in here to kind of make it look like whatever you want, right? You can make it larger or smaller. One interesting side note is if you were to take this object and or this material and make it non-metallic like this, then you get this kind of like interesting rock look. So if you wanted to generate a rock, for example, or like a procedural rock, this could be a good way to do that as well. Um, but we're just gonna leave it as metallic for right now. And so now what we wanna do though is at the moment we're making our entire object kind of too bumpy, right? So th the whole thing is getting this applied to it. We only want this to apply in certain locations. And so the way that we can adjust that is we can actually do a shift A and we can add a color ramp node in here. So if we had a color ramp node in here like this, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us control over where that bumpy metal material happens. Notice how when you do this, by the way, it's gonna compile your shaders every time you add something significant like that. So notice how if we start dragging this left and right, we start getting larger or smaller areas where we have this damage kind of occurring. So this is an excellent way to create a material that's actually going to damage your object right here. Now. One thing to note about this is if you were to swap the black and the white like this, so notice how if I drag the black to the right and the white to the left, and then look at this, now what this is doing is this is actually more applying a material that kind of adds to the surface of this instead. And again, you can use this to kind of adjust the size of the damage that's occurring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to duplicate this and we'll actually keep two of these. What that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to look at the effect either way just by swapping this out, right? So if I was to drag this color into the height and then this color into this color right here, now I can switch these really quickly to see the different effects. And so we're gonna keep both of these in here, but for right now, I'm gonna keep the one that actually makes everything looks like it's damaged inward um, applied to the surface for right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this so that I've got like some damage in here. Or notice if you um, adjust the scale right here, the size of the damage that's being applied here is going to change. You can also adjust things like the roughness. So the less rough this is, the more these are like big cuts that are in here. If you make the roughness smaller like this, notice how that damage starts to get smaller as well. So you can make this so you have lots of like little pits across your object by adjusting your roughness or these kind of like bigger chunks that are in here, depending on what you're trying to do. So I'm gonna kind of leave it on like the 0.7 right here. So these aren't ultra deep, but it does give you some really interesting effects if you uh, leave that more to the left as well. And we can kind of take a look at some of that in a minute. All right, so right now though, we have a little bit of a problem. And the problem is if we were to jump over 
and try to apply this material to my Bonnie model. So if I tap into edit mode, tap A, and then just assign my rusted material to the whole thing like this, notice how you're getting some distortion in here. And so the distortion is problematic because that means that it's not gonna look very good on some models, right? Like down here, everything looks okay, but up here, um, everything's getting stretched. And so what we need to do in order to fix that is we need to make sure that we come in here with this material, right? Our rusted metal material. And I'm gonna go back to this one right here. But what we wanna do is we wanna do a shift A and we wanna make sure that we add a mapping node right here. So if you drag the vector into the vector, you're going to be good here. But then we also need to make sure that we apply a texture coordinate node to this. So we want a texture coordinate node right here. And we want to make sure that we drag the, we want to make sure that we drag the node for object into the vector. So what that's going to do is that's just going to use the objects mapping in order to apply this. Well, now if we do this, right, this looks fine, but it looked fine anyway. But notice how now we're not getting that distortion on our object anymore. That's just going to make this so you can apply it to any object inside of Blender. All right, so one of the issues with this currently is while we have a fair amount of bump and size in our damage areas, which I'm going to scale up just for right now. Um, we may adjust it back down a little bit later, but we've got a fair amount of damage going on in here. But the rest of our metal doesn't look very realistic, right? It's almost too smooth. So what we need to do is we need to add some additional bumpiness to that material. So we're going to do that by adding a new bump material and we're going to apply it to our normal. So we're just going to do a shift A. We're going to add a bump material right here. And we're just going to drag the normal into the normal right here. And so again, nothing's going to happen because there's no input coming into this yet, right? So um, what we need to do is we need to do the same thing we did before. We need to add a noise texture node. So I'm just going to do a shift A, add noise texture, and apply that right here. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to drag the color from that into the height map right here. And so what that's going to do is that's going to apply a noise to the rest of your object. So the first thing we want to do is crank that detail up, um, which is going to make this look a whole lot like the rest of this object, which we can mess with in a minute. Um, but that detail is going to be really important. We also want to bring the strength of the effect down like this. So notice how now when we bring the strength of the effect down, what you're getting is you're getting this kind of like metal material in here, but it's got a little bit of like up and down, like there's some imperfections in there. Then the other thing we want to do is we're going to bring our roughness up. That's going to make this um, not quite so big in here. So if I bring the roughness down, or if I bring the roughness up, Notice how now this just kind of looks like the metal is kind of like naturally diffusing the light a little bit. But now what we need to do is we need to apply a different color to this, right? Because the rusty area needs to have kind of a rust material applied to it. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're actually going to take this, we're going to take this uh, noise texture and we're going to drag it into our color, right? So if I drag this into my color, right here, um, that's really not going to affect anything, right? Because we haven't really given it any color information. So, I mean, you're getting a little bit of kind of like crazy color in here because it's trying to read this data. But really what you want to do is between the noise texture and the base color, you want to add another color ramp node. So if you add a color ramp node right here, what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to control the color that's being placed on this surface. Right, And so when this comes in right now, you're not really getting anything. But what we can do is we can start adjusting this using the color ramp. So notice how as I drag these in, right, the closer I get them together, the more of a contrast I'm going to get between my rusty areas and my non-rusty areas. And notice how if I kind of like drag this over and switch it over, then um, it's going to be the other way, right? So I'm gonna have like the dark material is inside of my damage area and the light material is in my other areas like this. And notice how these adjust if you adjust the scale of your texture right here. So you can use this in order to add colors to them in your model. But we don't want a black material in here, right? We want this to transition to more of like an orange material. So what you can do is you can click on this object right here and apply more of an orange material. So if I drag this up, 
and then give this kind of like an orangey look like this. Notice how I can use this in order to get that kind of like orange rusty material that's in here. And you want to be careful because you don't want to go too far in like the uh, in the um, gold direction, right? You don't want this to really look like gold is showing through, though that is kind of an interesting effect. But you can kind of play around with this a little bit. Um, maybe you want to go in kind of like the more of the red, um, the reddish orangish direction right here. And so what that's doing is that's applying that gold texture in here um, in the area where the color ramp is more like black right here. Um, and one thing we can do is we can adjust that roughness up and down, right? If we adjust the roughness all the way like this, then um, that's going to give us one look. If we adjust it to the right, it's going to give us a different look. So you can kind of play around with these in order to get different results in here like this. And so one thing I want to see a little bit more of though is the bumpiness inside of this, uh, this object, right? I don't want it to look smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump into this color ramp node that's currently uh, going into my bump map and I'm going to drag this black material to the right. So notice how when I black, drag the black material to the right, I get the bumpiness inside of the worn areas right here. So if you have it dragged too far to the left, right, it's going to be smooth on the inside, which also has some interesting applications, but not really for what we're doing right now. And notice how you can also adjust that transition um, by dragging that, uh, that white material to the left or to the right as well. And so one thing that I find is I find I get a better result in here if I actually add another color in my color ramp. Right, because right now basically we have like a transition going between this kind of like darker material and the light material, but it looks a little bit weird because stuff around the edges isn't really kind of transitioning. So it should be kind of a different color from this edge to the inside right here. Well, what I find is I find if I was to take this and add an additional um, point right here and give it a different color. So if I give it like a, uh, again, kind of an orangish, or I, I find it kind of interesting if I make it kind of like a dark or like a black material or something like that, it kind of makes it look like there's kind of some additional stuff happening around the outside. Um, this looks really good if you're trying to make a material that looks like the object has been damaged and then the oxidation has happened inside of those damaged areas. However, um, another way that you could do that is remember our old color ramp node that instead of making things look damaged, make thing, makes things uh, look like they're kind of like growing on top of this. Well, if we were to drag that color into our height instead of our other one, notice how now I get this look where the, the rust is almost more like bubbling out on my surface. And what you can do is if you want to do this, which I think is probably a little bit more realistic, but a little bit less fun, um, what you can do is you can drag that strength down a little bit. And so if you drag that strength down a little bit, then it's going to affect the way that this overall looks like this. Then that's going to give you a completely different look where these are smaller on here, but it does look like the surface is being oxidized a little bit. And you can kind of play around with your colors a little bit to get a result that you like, um, but you can also adjust things like your scale of the damage, right? So if I drag this way up, we're gonna get smaller. If I drag this down, you're gonna get larger areas where the rust has happened. And remember that you can switch between your color ramp nodes to have this build either outside or inside your object, depending on the result that you're going for. So leave a comment below. Let me know if you like this video. If you'd like to see more videos like it, I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to some other tutorials about some of the texture nodes in Blender on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.